the classic unit of frequency graph question um, with a spot of estimate of the mean as well. So the first question is we have to find the estimate of the mean from some group data. You can do this fairly quickly on your uh, GDC. So what you could do is input this data. But first of all, you have to find, and whatever way you do this, you have to find the uh, midpoint. So, because uh, we don't know what the actual marks are, we know all we know is there are 41 marks between 0 and 10. So in order to estimate uh, the data, uh, I'm going to call it M then for midpoint, even though I put... Uh, even though I put X on my spreadsheet. So the midpoint between 0 and 10 would be 5. So you add them together, divide by 2. Uh, just keep on doing these. They've also deliberately changed them here, I guess, just to keep make sure you're on your toes. So 40 plus 60 is 100, divided by 2 is 50. So the next midpoint would be 70, and the last one would be 90. And then we've got our frequencies here. So I put them into our uh, table. Already, so these are the midpoints which I've labeled X, and these are the frequencies which I've labeled F. And in order to estimate the mean, all you have to do is go into menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics, uh, number of lists one, and select the list which is X that we're looking at analyzing. The frequency list would be F, and then press OK. And X bar is your mean, so it'd be 39.8 to one significant uh, figure. And that looks about right, because it is roughly in the middle of the data. So that should be accurate. Right, now let's look at some of the other questions. So uh, next part is complete the cumulative frequency table. So for cumulative frequency, we are just, it's a running total. So you just keep on adding on. So cumulative frequency, going to start on so it starts on 41 between 0 and 10 then you add on another 32 so you got 73 and then you add on another 44 so you've got uh, 117 then you add on another 50 so you got 167 uh, then you have another 65 so we got 232 and then you add on 48 so we got uh, 280 and then add on another 20, so we've got 300. Uh, and that would be the cumulative frequency that you'd put into this table, which I suppose I should do really, shouldn't I? So the 73, 117, uh, 167 pieces of data up to 40, between 0 and 40. And then 232 between 0 and 60. And then there are 280 pieces of data between 0 and 80. So that's cumulative frequency, a running total of your frequency. Then you use this to plot a cumulative frequency graph. And you, always, you plot the upper boundary here, which is 10, because the lower boundary effectively is 0, against uh, the cumulative frequency. So it'll be 41 and uh, 10. So let's try and do that as carefully as I can. So 41, there's 10, and 40 would be approximately there. It's going to be pretty difficult for me to do accurately. Uh, so now we're plotting 20 against 73. So let's plot that. So that is plotted against, genuinely can't remember, uh, 100. So 100 and 300, there we go. Right, so you get a choice. You can either use a smooth curve or you can join up with uh, straight lines. So I've tried to join up my uh, points with a straight line, which proved quite challenging. Uh, should be easier for you using a ruler and a uh, pencil. And now, once I've got, I've got my cumulative frequency graph, I can now use it to answer the final question. So first of all, we're trying to find an estimate for the median mark. The median mark is the middle number of this piece of data well there are 300 pieces of data in total uh, to find the middle number that would be the 150th if they're all put out in a list uh, so it would be here so you'd read across and then move down remember it's just an estimate 
So that is falling on approximately uh, 36. And that would be your working out. So show, keep your lines in and to show your uh, working out. So medium V, yeah, 36 or thereabouts. Uh, then next one, we've got to work out the interquartile range. So we need the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Uh, the upper quartile is three quarters away through the data set. So three quarters of 300 pieces of data is 225, which would be right in the middle of 250 and uh, two, 250 and 200. And if we read down, that's approximately 58. But again, there'll be some room for error here. Uh, oh. Uh, particularly if I haven't read the question. So to get the interquartile range, we need to subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile. So I need the lower quartile as well. Lower quartile is a quarter of the way through 300 pieces of data, which would be the 75th piece of data, which looks like it lies at 20. So if the upper quartile was let me remind myself uh, 58 and the lower quartile was 20 to find the interquartile range we need to subtract those two so 58 minus 20 is about 38 then to for the last part 35 percent of the students pass the test use the curve in part c to find an estimate of the minimum amount on minimum mark needed to pass. Only 35% pass. So that means we're looking at 35% of uh, 300. Which is uh, 105. So that means it's only it's going to be on the top end. 105. So it's going to be here. You can do 300 minus 105. And they like doing this. They like trying to trick you. Make sure you're going from the correct end. To me, it looks like it exactly falls there. Right. Because the top 35%, only 35% pass, so it'd be the ones who've done, who've got the highest marks would be here. So you're looking at this top end. So, and then that would be the corresponding mark. So that is 35% of the students who've passed, which would mean the ones with the lower mark below that line there, they've all failed. So hence why we're looking at doing 300 minus 105. So it looks like the pass mark is about 50.